This is the Hasselblad X2D with a 100 megapixel sensor, one of the largest that we'll use for creative photography. But this is the LSST, the world's largest digital camera, a 3200 megapixel monster. Welcome back, Petapixel viewers. I'm Chris Nichols. Let's talk about this amazing achievement. It might be jarring, but I've decided to retire to a lovely living room scene to explain something very important to you guys. What makes a humongous camera even more epic is having the best audio tracks available. That's why on our channel, we use audio for all of our music. And they are just now about to release a brand new feature called Elements. So Elements unlocks song stems. This is something only a handful of music catalogs offer. And song stems break down every single song in the audio catalog down to its base elements. So you've got a base Bass line, you've got wind instruments, you've got vocals. Every song will have various song stems and you can mix and match them to your heart's content. So first off, this completely expands how much music you have available because you can make your own custom tracks. Now everybody can listen to the individual song stems and have a lot of fun with it, but Audio Pro members will really unleash the full potential of audio elements. And we've got a great deal for you guys. If you click the link in the description below, you will get 70% off your first year of having your own Audio Pro membership. And then you can get playing with audio elements right away. And lastly, a big thanks to Jaron Schneider for his masterful reflecting of light with a lasagna pan. Let's now get back to the actually highly technically advanced LSSD camera. Okay, so we're in the Slack building here looking at the LSST camera and in this laboratory, I'm sorry about the noise. We've got HEPA filters and fans trying to maintain positive pressure to keep out all the dust. And of course, that means that we are head to toe in clean suits. And so there you have it. This is what we've come to see, the LSST camera. This is the world's largest digital camera. And indeed, it is big. I mean, this is 3,000 kilograms, roughly. That's 1,500 knocks. For our British viewers to give you contacts, that's 472 stone. Quite the heavy beast. And of course, the digital camera has to have a digital sensor. This is 3,200 megapixels. Okay, we've got 189 individual sensors arrayed on 21 adjustable rafts, 640 millimeter diameter across. This thing is huge. Each one of those 189 sensors is 16 megapixels, and that's what gives us the incredible resolution the sensor is capable of. So the sensor assembly is roughly right here in the camera. And what's really amazing about how precise this thing has to be as flat as possible. So given any sort of variations, the sort of mountains and valleys of this sensor plane, they were aiming for 10 microns. They were actually able to get it down to four microns. And to give you guys some perspective, the width of a human hair is roughly 70 microns. So this is incredibly precise. So here you get a better look at one of the individual rafts with the nine sensors that would be arrayed in here. Now, to get that flatness, each of these sensors can be adjusted with shims. I assume like beer coasters, they just jam those in there. And then you also can adjust the actual raft itself. But I've been told that it was machined so precisely that the adjustment was actually not necessary. Everything worked out really well. So Jordan, which one's flatter? This or that? How about now? So each of these individual sensors are mentioned is 16 megapixels, but the pixel pitch, each one of these is about 10 microns. So it's actually quite large. If you think about the average digital camera sensor, let's just say around 2.3 microns, this is 10 microns, much larger photo sites, collects a lot of light, which is exactly what you want. But there was a limit there. You don't want to go too big either because you need the resolution to cover something small like a star at that kind of distance. So I've been told that each pixel, you get about three pixels covering the average star out there in the universe. So this entire camera project is just shy of $170 million. You can imagine all of this equipment is built in house, very expensive. So why would Slack Laboratories be allowing Chris Nichols, the guy who never uses a camera strap, to get his hands all over these sensors and possibly drop and damage them? Well, it's because these are actually rejected sensors. They have to be so good, you know, no noisy pixels, no bad sectors of the sensor, that they've gone through hundreds of these, just thrown them into a pile or assemble them here in a way that we can present them to you. You might also notice when you look at the sensor, there's two different colors of sensors. That's because in order to get the high quality CCDs that they needed in time to finish the project, they had to go to multiple vendors. Okay, so every camera has to have a lens and you can see here that big front element. I assume that they just like breathe on it and use the inside of their shirt to clean it whenever they need to. 
Uh, so this lens is quite interesting. I mean, first off, we've got three giant mirrors in the actual telescope assembly itself. That's what's giving us the incredible focal length. But then we have these three optical lenses here in front of the sensor, because you have to focus light and also correct for chromatic aberrations, just like you would on an optical camera lens. This lens is giving you about a 3.5 degree field of view in the night sky, okay? That's basically, if you had the full moon to give it context, the actual image would be about seven and a half times wider than the moon itself. This is not, of course, rectangular aspect ratio. It's largely a circular aspect ratio for the image that this camera takes. This is the largest optical lens we've seen, 1.55 meters across. That gives us an equivalent bright aperture of f1.23. We have to be precise because we're in a scientific laboratory, absolutely. Now, this is the largest camera, but there was a camera that was similar in size, but only about half the resolution. That was the Hyper Supreme camera, and that's actually in the Subaru telescope in Hawaii. The astrophysicists who helped build that also helped build this. Now, every camera has to have filters for photography, and this one is no different, although the size is slightly different. So, photographic filters were measuring things in millimeters of diameter, like a 77 millimeter. These filters are a meter across, and believe it or not, there's actually five inside there right now on a rotating carousel. Now, these are colored filters, and they're also filters for isolating certain wavelengths of light, like IR, or UV. And what this mechanism can actually do is basically pull one of the filters out, much like, like a disc in a jukebox, and then just pull it out, move it in front of the lens, and then it can pop it out, rotate to another one, pull it out. You can also add further filters. This assembly comes off. They've got a crane and a mechanism to almost like a DVD player take one filter out and load another one in. So to protect that massive front element, you need a lens cap. This is the lens cap, despite its huge proportions, only weighs about 30 pounds. So I'm sure I could still put it in my pocket and manage to lose it somehow. Now the LSST camera has a lot more in common with the digital cameras we use every day than we might think. Here you can see the mechanical shutter, just like we have in a camera. This is carbon fiber blades, exactly the same kind of thing, although to a much larger scale than we have in our cameras. I've been told if I put extremities in there, I will lose them, so I'll try not to do that. Now, this can go up to 0.9 seconds as its fastest shutter speed, although it can go faster than that by actually doing a, a sliver exposure. Again, very similar to what we have in photographic cameras. Otherwise, when this is open, exposure times, you can do whatever you want. Nominally, they'll probably be around 15 to 30 seconds or so, but they can set any exposure time that they want. So it's been fascinating to have an up-close look at the LSST camera, but we've got a lot more to talk about. So let's go somewhere where we can wear less clothing and probably more dust. Whew, okay, we're out of our clean suits here. We're back in the room, we can talk. And look, we're gonna talk about science next. Hopefully my hair is okay. So one question that we all had was, if you've got this giant sensor, it's gonna generate a lot of heat. How do you keep that manageable? So they super cool the entire sensor down to minus 100 degrees Celsius. I have no idea what that is in Fahrenheit, but no one cares. minus 100 is a great round number. They actually have a complex refrigeration unit that can keep this down to that incredibly low temperature, but they also have heaters that can be turned on to keep the equilibrium right at that amount. Now you can't operate a sensor at minus 100 degrees Celsius without getting massive condensation, which would clearly be a terrible thing, unless you run the entire thing in a vacuum chamber, which is exactly what they did. So the whole interior around the sensor is a vacuum chamber. They've got their own customized unit, all built in house to pull all the air out of this area. We were actually supposed to come here eight months ago to have a quick early preview of this camera, but they had a problem. They were actually getting leaking around one of the wires going into the vacuum chamber, and you can't have any molecules floating around there otherwise you're gonna have a disaster so it took them a while to fix that and clear it out and now here we are I want to I want to touch it no oh, probably better not all right you see, you can't just talk about the LSST camera project here in Slack in California without also talking about the Vera Rubin Observatory built on a mountaintop in Chile. Because, you know, normally what happens is there's an already existing observatory and they say, hey, anybody wants to build a camera to mount to our existing equipment, you can do that here. But this project's totally different. The Vera Rubin Observatory was built specifically for this camera. There's a huge team over there tons of engineers, tons of astrophysicists creating this whole mounting system. Those three mirrors that you look at are ginormous. I mean, the largest one is eight and a half meters in diameter. And then the LSSD camera is gonna be mounted in the middle of this, literally the heart of this entire observatory. But then this begs the question, how are we gonna get the world's largest digital camera from California all the way across the Americas to a mountaintop in Chile above the cloud layer? Well. 
Of course, they've engineered that as well. It's pretty amazing. So first off, they're gonna take the LSST. They've built these custom mounts that will protect it from vibration and damage. They're gonna put in a chartered 747, fly it over to Chile. Then they're gonna ship the LSST into a truck and they're gonna drive it all the way to the mountain. Now, the paved road's not as big a deal, but once we get to the mountain itself, we're talking a 25 kilometer gravel road going up a steep incline and they can only go about five kilometers an hour so they don't damage the LSST. This is going to take all day. Of course, they've got multiple other truckloads bringing equipment and everything to be prepared before the camera even arrives. This is going to be an insane and harrowing journey. You've got all the scientists, astrophysicists, and engineers out there, but do you think they could actually design a photocopier that doesn't jam? I doubt it. I think that's truly the final frontier. So we have this incredible project spanning more than 10 years in two different places on the world. What's the end result? What's the purpose of this camera? So the LSST is primarily a technical camera. What I mean by that is it's not really going to be used to make a lot of the artwork that we've seen with other tighter field of view scopes that are up in space, like Hubble, like the James Webb Telescope. So one of the main purposes of this camera is just to scan the entire sky and see the relationships between all the celestial bodies that we're talking about up there. Galaxies, black holes, stars, uh, also asteroids so we can monitor them and see where they are and where they're moving and just study the relationship of this camera. Think of it like a long time lapse movie where it's going to be scanning the sky for their intentions about 10 years just to see how everything's changing. And this is also pretty amazing. Just one sensor of the 189 sensors on this camera, when it's resolving the sky, will capture tens of thousands of galaxies and stars. I mean, the scope of what this is gonna scan is truly incredible. And the best part, this data is all gonna be made public to the scientific community. The goal of this camera is just to pump out data over time so we can see how our universe is changing and then anybody can use that data to then learn so much more about the skies above. So I had a fantastic time out here at the Slack Laboratories looking at the LSST camera. I find this stuff so fascinating, the science behind it, the engineering. It was really beautiful to learn about. I hope you guys enjoyed this as well. Now I do want to give a huge thanks to the people that helped us directly. I mean, Travis, Margo, Aaron, and Yosuke, and also Manuel for being our liaison here with the laboratories. But I think the important thing to understand is that it isn't just up to a small group of people to make this project possible. It spans thousands of people all working hard towards one goal. I mean, it's amazing how everything is done in-house, engineering the parts, the designing, the building, the optical design, the sensor technology, the UI interfaces, the software and operating systems. I mean, all done by so many people passionately working towards one goal. And thanks to all of you as well for joining us on this journey. Leave your comments below. Let us know what you think about the LSST project. Do join us on the Petapixel podcast as well. It's on all your favorite podcasting apps, or you can find it on this exact same YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you soon with more from Petapixel. Thank you.